Hello, it's me again, Tuesday solo ep. Do you love me? I love you. I got a few DMs from you guys this week, which I was really glad about because, number one, it meant you were listening. (laughs) And I really am happy that people are listening. And number two, you wanted to know the brand of the period undies that I was wearing and I let you know. So um, if you still want to know what that brand is, um, DM me. I'll let you know. Also, the ones that I did let know, let me know how you go. Oh, 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 with your period, oh, undies, oh, okay? Oh, yes, good. Um, I'm recording on Wurundjeri Land. I'm at home today. Very good news. I've adopted out my latest. So just adding that, Bimini, Bimini, what a name. I love it. It's that thing that you put over your boat, you know, your little boat, your little tinny. It's that thing. So I don't know who named her, but clearly someone that likes boats. Hello, Autumn. And she's, I I say another dog's name and Autumn comes. Now, we're just going to get, my dog just walked over and what, and bombed me. What, what, (laughs) she just did a drive bump. Oh, my God. That stinks. Oh, she came up to me wagging her tail, which made it worse, and walked away and left a stank. Holy shit balls. It's gone away now. But um, do dogs do that on purpose? Mine does. I mean, she's never done that before, by the way. So maybe because I was saying Bimini's name, Autumn thought, hey, I'm going to fart bomb ya. D. Evie. <laughs> I've just finished listening to your ep with Rosie as I was perimeno, sweating profusely through unpacking the weekly groceries. <laughs> oh, sweetheart, do I know what that's like. I put up an, um, an Instagram story of James Brown performing. And it's just like, and it just had me after I've just fitted a bed sheet and he comes up into the shot and he's just drenched with sweat, obviously singing on stage. But, yeah, I think we all know in perimenopause, you don't even have to be in perimenopause to know how much you sweat trying to put on a bloody fitted bed sheet. Well, times that by 100, perimenopause, do, I'm just going to become one of those people that puts a million sheets on your bed and just takes one off. <laughs> So a 12, 12 sheets. No. How many weeks? 52 sheets. Once a week. Pull it off. Okay. Um, my God, you two absolutely nailed the whole trauma therapy body image in a way that I don't think any of my friends really get. I'm 51 years old. I was late in life having kids and surprise, twins at 40, now rapidly losing any semblance of a waistline, having come to the very sad realisation over the past few years that my mother is a narcissist. My hope is I'm not going to damage my girls, as I now know, thanks to therapy, that I was. Even sadder is my brother always knew how she treated me, as does my dad. It's truly heartbreaking to see your children treated with more respect than you ever were and still are not. You are making a difference and I love you for that. Thank you for sharing your beautiful soul, Evie. Susie. Oh, Susie, my heart. Oh, and I'm so glad that Rosie and I's conversation helped you in some way and anyone else that's listening, that's what we do it for. That's what we do it for. Um, you know, besides that we just love the sound of our own voices. Um, I would firstly like to say I'm so sorry that you had an upbringing in any way that was traumatic. It is so unfair to think of innocent children going through anything. You know, these perfect little humans that come out without any damage to them and then we just damage them in in so many different kinds of ways, indoctrinations and uh, neglect, ignorance, abuse, teachings, patriarchal teachings, um, selectiveness, 
liking someone more than the other. I've been watching a lot of Long Lost Family, which is a BBC show. For some reason, every day that I'm not working, I turn the TV on at the same day and I always watch SBS and it's this BBC show that's old, people finding their um, long lost relatives, sisters, mums, dads, children, every day. It's just killing me. Um, But just the stories behind why people give up children. I mean, this has got nothing to do with it, but in a way it does. Watching the parents talk about giving up a child or being a really bad parent and deciding, you know, to go to that orphanage and (laughs) awfully not being (laughs) given any help, just an orphanage going, okay, give us the kid. You know, that was back in, you know, the end of I think the 70s was when that kind of thing finally stopped. But, um, you know, parents are just humans who can be so damaged themselves or they do have a narcissistic disorder and they have children. Why? We know why. People have children because that's what we're here to do. We, you know, it's it's in us. We procreate like an, any other animal. But we're so much more intelligent than any other, other animal that we can make those choices not to do it. And there's a lot of people not making those choices that I think if they did make those choices, the world would probably be a better place and they would probably be a little better off without having this perfect little soul and inflicting trauma onto them, your shit onto them. Well, Susie, I I just want to say to you, you are doing the right thing straight up and you will not do what your mother did to you because you're already getting therapy and therapy makes all the difference. Unless you've also developed narcissistic um, disorder, which you need to ask your therapist or you know a lot of narcissists won't admit it, um, but I think your therapy is already helping you become be the the better the best adult that you can be. So therefore, you uh, would be mothering, and and I think mothering at forty, having children at forty, the wisdom that you've already got, the experience that you've already got. Oh, I mean, it's it's a shame because our bodies are. So- and by that time and now you're going that you've got perimenopause like you know you don't want that happening when you've got 10 year old twins but that's the world that you're living in right now um and I bet you are incredible keep your therapy up for yourself because your brother and your dad you know the resentment that you must have and then you see your grandchildren your children Um, the grandchildren being treated better than you were, just like I did, is it's really hard to reconcile with as an adult because you've still got that child in you that is remembering and just wants to stand there and cry and stamp their feet and say, why are you doing that to her? Why are you taught? Why are you not yelling at her the way you... This is not fair. But, you know, you're an adult and you can't say that. But why not say that? Say that to your therapist. Go and say, I need to have some therapy, which you probably already do, about my um, inner child. I want to I wanna have a chat with my inner child and um, say how f***ing unfair it was and is the life that you've had and that you're still, you know, being reminded of now through this beautiful exchange clearly and you want the best for your children and or nieces and nephews, but that little child in you has never, ever been healed from that and they never will be because they're gone. They're still in you but they're not here anymore. So I think you're amazing and I think that you, I know you're doing an amazing job. And the fact that you related to me and Rosie so much, you know, shows an empathy. That means that you're mothering 
or parenting, I should say, is going to um, be one of the better ones because you're aware. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Awareness. Like, you know you're going to fuck up a bit. We all know that. But if you know it and you try better, you try to be better, you try to do the positive changes um, as you navigate this world, what more can you do? What more can you do? So um, I hope you're okay. I love you. Thank you for sending that to me. That was really, really nice to hear. And um, I know you're going to be okay. Now we've got some interesting facts. Useless? No, useful. I don't know if you've know, all noticed, but I've started putting them up on a Friday. Um, you all get them first because you're special, because you're listening. Um, but then I, I've decided I'm going to start putting them up, which is fantastic. It's, you know, people are loving them, but always come back and listen f- to me first because that's, you're the inside. This week's one comes from the days. I'm going to remember this one because it's a quick one, but it's an interesting, I don't have to get too many facts about this one. So there's nothing written down. So back in the day when it's horse and cart, I don't know where, let's say everywhere. Let's say everywhere that war, war, <laughs> everywhere that used a horse and cart, Cobb, remember Cobb and Co? Oh, I don't know if you're all old enough to have Cobb and Co. Like we, uh, where I grew up was near um, Austra- old Sydney town <laughs> and that's where we'd go on, um, what do you call the things, excursion all the time because it was easy, pack the kids in a bus and you all go to old Sydney town for the day and they'd have a town cry, hear ye, hear ye, and it was... <laughs> And yet all the actors were dressed in old, ye olde town, Sydney, and um, there'd always be horse and, and cart and and they would always have Cobb and Co. Cobb and Co was, you know, who made. They were, the, they were dominating the market of horse carts. That's all I remember anyway. So where the driver sat, which was always up top because he had the reins of the horse ears, um, he was at the front and up the top of the carriage and the carriage would have the passengers in it. So where his legs were, where he was sat, the, the panel underneath, they would have a hole in it with a rope attached to his leg that would run through to the carriage. And when the riders, riders, when the passengers wanted him to stop, they'd pull on the rope. And he would feel it and whoa, hey, Nelly, whoa, Nelly, um, is this your stop? Off you get then, governor. <laughs> and they'd get off. Anyway, kids and teenagers thought it was hilarious. Kids never change, do they? Pranks to um, tug on that rope whenever they felt like it, just to get him to stop, just like we do today when you're on the bus or the tram or the train and you know, especially on the bus. Like I grew up with buses and people would pull the cord and the kids would pull the cord until the driver lost his shit and go because he'd have to pull over and no one would get off and he'd go, who did that? And then he'd eventually, after about four of those empty stops, ghost stops, he'd go, right, I've had it up to here with you lot. Whoever's doing it, if I catch us, you're off. And we'd have to walk a long way. I never did it, but they'd have to walk a long way if they got caught. So I guess this was the original prank, but that's where the saying, are you with me? You know what I'm going to say, to pull your leg comes from. You pulling my leg. Stop pulling my leg. So that's what he would say. And now today it means, you know, to um to have a joke on someone, to pull a prank to, um, you're pulling my leg, you're telling me a fib, something that's not true. So um, it's kind of the same but a little bit different. But um, that's where that comes from. You're welcome. You're welcome. And that's me for this week. I hope you're all good. Um, I'm in Wurundjeri land and can I just say, I don't know where any of you are but it is 
crazy Melbourne weather at the moment. You know what everyone in the country thinks of Melbourne? Oh, you what do you mean you don't like Melbourne weather? Just if you don't like it, just wait ten minutes. You know, because changes. We are having that like big time at the moment. Woke up this morning, sunny, sunny, hail. Just got some hail, and then sunny rain. Went to the dog park, looked up, sunny, sunny, over to my right, black sky. Melbourne, that's what I like about it. Shuffles and changes, just like my undies. I will see you all Thursday. We have a wonderful guest this Thursday. We get quite deep, quite serious. Um, She's a wonderful person to follow um, because her wisdom will become something that you'll get quite obsessed with. So I'll be in your e-holes then. Till um, then, if you've got something to tell me, ask me, whatever me, you can email female me at twogirls at novapodcast.com.au or slide into my DMs, but no, send us an email. I, I like that my producer gets them. And then she has to go through them and decide which one. She might be making them all up. I don't know. I'm hoping not. But you never know. I I don't care. I love you all. Goodbye.